is this Pioneer DVD burner and PVR a better pass-through device for getting rid of waving and flagging than the Panasonic ES15? So we're gonna compare three of these DVD burners. These are devices that you put in your workflow between a VHS player and a capture device. And in the case of this one that you're seeing, the uh, Panasonic ES15, it'll take a very wavy, flaggy video and it'll straighten it right up. This is what it looks like inside. This is when it was made. And these are its ins and outs. This is the Panasonic EZ or EZ28. And this is what it looks like inside. And this is when it was made. And these are its ins and outs. Notice it's got an HDMI out, which the other one doesn't have. Now I gotta pause the video for one second just to deal with this. Is it an EZ28? Is it an EZ28? Of course, the letter is Z in the UK and the rest of the English speaking world, apart from the United States where it is Z. So is it EZ28, EZ28? In Canada, we're a little bit confused by this. Our original influence is the UK, but now we're more and more influenced by the US. So I don't know what to say. I don't wanna get in trouble with any of the viewers. So I'm just gonna say nothing. Anyway, this is what the EZ EZ looks like inside. And finally, it's the Pioneer 640HS. This is what it looks like inside. These are its ins and outs. Notice the hard drive in the middle there. It's got a DVD burner on the left side. Now the goal of this test is to give these devices the hardest, craziest, waviest, flaggiest video that I can come up with. So for that, I'm using my worst VHS player. This is the uh, HRA60U from JVC. Also my all in wonder 9600 XT SD capture device. In theory, this is a great device and it is a great device, but it's not as good as my ATI 600. In the one area when it comes to flagging and waving, the ATI 600 seems to by itself do a better job of taming really uh, wavy and flaggy VHS tapes, whereas the all in wonder 9600 doesn't. So I'm gonna use it. We have the Panasonic ES15, it's in the middle of the workflow. And as you can see, it's already straightening things out. The line is straight. And we're gonna to get to a, a part in a moment here where we're gonna see if it passes the, uh, the second test. Here it comes in about three seconds right now. All right, it took care of all that sort of flashing stuff. All right, here is the worst part of the video coming up right here. On the left, watch that. And the ES15 straightens it out. Okay, so the ES15 is doing what the ES15 is known to do along with the ES10. It's fixing the worst possible uh, flagging and waving from VHS tapes, and it's doing it well. Okay, that, that's what we sort of expected it to do. Now let's move on to the EZEZ28. Now right away, you can see that it's not quite, look at that on the right side, it's not quite getting all the, uh, all the issues out. So this was not unexpected. I, I knew that the ES15 and 10 do a better job than the later models, the EZ, EZ models. Let's see how it does over here. Well, it got, it fixed that. Okay, so it had some trouble at the beginning, but now it seems to have straightened things out. Now here's a bad one, let's watch this. Wow, okay, so it uh, it fixed that right up. So now I'm, I'm a bit confused because I thought maybe it wasn't gonna be any good and it seems to have gotten rid of the, the worst issues. Not 100%, but not terrible. Uh, ES15 is still, uh, is still better as far as I can tell. Okay, now our third uh, uh, contestant here is the Pioneer. And the Pioneer is doing well, let's see as we get to the, uh, as the first big test. All right, here it comes. All right, well, we got through that and here is the big, big disaster of a video right here. Okay, well, it passed that as well. Okay, so, so far, it has been perfect. It has done the job equally well as the ES15, which I was not expecting from this Pioneer.
Okay, now let's uh, put the uh, ES-15 head-to-head against the Pioneer. Now, we know they can both do the job of straightening, straightening things out, but what about the color and other kind of things? If you're going to have to pick between these two, which would you pick? Now, keep in mind, this is a tape that was recorded in the mid-'80s on extended play off of TV, so quality is in great, which is why I'm, um, I'm using this as a stress test. But looking at the colors and looking at everything, I mean, if you sort of spun me around, I wouldn't be able to tell you which is which or which I prefer. I mean, they both look they both look similar, although I think that the ES-15 seems to have a little bit more detail. It seems like the Pioneer is um, filtering or something. So we're going to have a look at the settings to see what, what, what that's about. But all in all, kind of surprised by this Pioneer DVR-640. And if you look at the specs... You see here that it says it has uh, progressive scan, 3D noise reduction, 3D YC separation, digital TBC. Okay, so this is what the marketing said. Now, if we go into the menu system, I want to have a look at this because in the video adjust settings, there's a lot of stuff that you can play with in here, which was also surprising to me. First thing is that you can set some memory presets, up to three, I think. And then there's some ones that are built into the um, into the system, including one called VCR, but you can't actually see what's in there. They won't let you actually look to see what the settings are. Anyway, let's go into memory one. Let's go into detailed settings and holy cow. Okay, this is a lot more settings than the ES-15 has. And I'm gonna show you the ES-15 at the end of this video as well. Uh, to see what everything does, okay, it sort of explains everything, but these are actually the same words that appear on the screen as your um, as you're adjusting these things. So just look at the bottom of the screen if you wanna know what this is. Uh, YNR, that's the brightness. It's a, no, it's a noise reduction for brightness. So it's the Luma noise reduction, which you can strengthen or turn off according to this uh, setting. CNR is the noise reduction for color, or I guess chroma, chroma noise reduction. I think that's what that uh, would be called. Uh, here's an automatic white balance thing. Okay, well, we're not going to use that, so we'll, we'll keep that turned off in the video. Uh, and uh, white level, uh, for the, the video that you saw earlier, I kept that right at the middle, uh, which was the default setting, so I didn't, uh, I didn't reduce that. For black level, uh, you can adjust this all the way up, and I guess as you do black level max, it actually makes it brighter. And if you put it to the left to minimum, it actually makes it darker. So I kept it all the way at the darkest level. The IRE thing, I wasn't sure what that was. I looked it up. I'm not 100% certain I understand it, but but in the video that you saw before, I set it to zero, not to 7.5. And in fact, I'm going to show you a comparison between those two um, later on. And for hue and chroma level, I just left them right at the middle. I didn't... Uh, I didn't mess with that. Chroma level, it says it has to do with uh, saturation. So we left that at the middle. We kept the hue where it was. Uh, and that's a lot of settings that you can adjust. Uh, now you compare that with the uh, ES-15. And the ES-15 uh, only has one thing that you can adjust in the video section. I think the ES-10 might have a few more things. I think I read that the ES-10, you can uh, turn off noise reduction, even though it's maybe not totally off, I read. but. Uh, in the video section here of the um, ES-15, all you can do is black level control, which the internet says you should set to lighter, darker. So input level lighter, output level darker. Uh, so I have it set correctly. Now, so far we've tested to see whether the two of these devices can get rid of the flagging and the waving. But I really wanted to see what the effect on the image was. And for this, I, I decided I needed to get clearer image. So what I did was I used some footage, which I shot recently, which is in another video. I output it as S-video, uh, not uh, through Firewire, but as S-video. And I used each of these devices as a pass-through. Now, as you can see, the Pioneer on the left looks... Uh, a bit darker, there's more contrast. And that's consistent with the histogram that I uh, put together. You can see here that the ES-15 is represented by the green, the sort of yellow and the red, whereas the Pioneer is sort of in the background, it's the blue sort of peeking out from behind. So it's much more, it's more compact. The Pioneer is more compact in this histogram, whereas the ES-15 is more spread out, which is consistent with the idea that the um, ES-15 is giving us a brighter image.
Now here's a, a still image from the Pioneer. And what you notice if you look at the black uh, in the middle of the screen, that sort of a table covering, you're gonna, it loses some detail. In the next image you're gonna see from the ES-15, it's brighter and some of that detail is brought back. Look at the chair though, the chair on the right side of the screen. The ES-15 has a lot of, I don't know, noise compared to the Pioneer. Here's the Pioneer. So I think there's noise canceling happening in the Pioneer, even though we turned off the noise canceling. I think it's just doing more noise canceling than the ES-15 is. Uh, and in terms of the, you know, the brightness and contrast, the ES, or rather the Pioneer lets us adjust that. So we could actually make it brighter. So I'm not really concerned about that part of it. And in fact, you can even change those settings within virtual dub. I guess that what I want to see is, is one look more saturated? Uh, and I think actually the Pioneer looks a little bit more saturated. In terms of noise, I think that the ES-15 has more noise than the Pioneer. Not a deal breaker either way. It's very close. But all this to say, all this to say, that in every step of the way, the ES-15 and the Pioneer seem comparable. Now, let's get to the conclusion. I think we can get rid of the EZ, EZ, Panasonic. It was better than I thought, actually, but, you know, when you have these two other ones to work with, maybe you don't need that one. Okay, the ES-15 and the uh, 640HS, they both have line TBC, and they both uh, correct the tearing and flagging. So on that... Uh, on that uh, criteria, I think they were identical. I really can't say the ES-15 was any better. In terms of the settings, there was one place in the ES-15 to adjust the black level, whereas in the Pioneer, there was a lot more places to do, and you could even adjust the noise uh, reduction for, for Chroma and for Luma. And, you know, maybe it's not necessary. Maybe you don't have to use any of it. I mean, I, I kept all that stuff turned off, but I thought that was a really interesting feature. They both have a DVD recorder, but that's a moot point since we're not going to be using the DVD recording capability because what we want to use these for is to put it in a workflow to sit between a VHS player and a capture device so that it gets rid of the waving and the flagging without causing any visual degradation to the, uh, to the image or at least to minimize how much degradation it does. And finally, the Pioneer has a PVR, has a hard drive inside for what it's worth. It's not really worth very much for what we need it for, but it's sort of interesting to know. So I have to say, I was extremely impressed with the Pioneer. I was not expecting this at all. I picked it up at a thrift shop for 10 bucks, and I think it was a pretty good purchase. And I may use it uh, in the future if I need to get rid of tearing and flagging on a regular VHS player. Because in my view, unless I'm totally off, uh, off base here, I think it performed as well and maybe better if you look at the, at the sort of color uh, at the end. Uh, it performed as well as the ES-15.